having the assumption that sales are bad and like if we do this we're selling out to the man or it's not authentic anymore and it's not real and in reality it's like no this is when you actually become a professional at what you do and by having this all defined it just makes the experience that much better and it's the first experience that you're going to have with the client face to face Swirling. <laughs> it's, it's not capacity. Do you have an aerator? <laughs> this is how. Aerate Before you drink your fit aid, you turn it upside down. Give it a swirl. Give it a swirl. Mm. Be careful when you open. Oh. Oh, yeah. That's the spot. <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> yeah. Welcome to Barbell Business. I'm Mike Bledsoe here with Marcus Gersey and Angelo Cisco. Hello. And uh, we are visiting Iron Fire Athletics, home of CrossFit Poway, here with the the founder, Jason Dunbar, and we're going to get in a lot of stuff, but you might be at wondering why Angelo's on and Doug's not on. Look at Doug over there. He's so cute. He doesn't even know what's going on. <laughs> um, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, we have Angelo on today because he is our head business coach for uh, Barbell Business and for all of our, our logic systems. And... Uh, he came out, and we're going to be doing a lot of videoing and hanging videoing. out and, and creating some stuff for you guys mm -hmm. and gals. Yep. And uh, so we want to pop in here, CrossFit Poway, and uh, and uh, talk to Jason. And uh, you've been crushing it lately. One of the things that's so cool about your story is how long have you been a box owner? Since 2007. 2007. Oh, gee. So, so this will be – June will be 10 years. Yeah, you're – yeah, that's OG. I opened uh, my box in 07 mm -hmm. as well. And, yeah, being in the space for this long, is we've seen a ton of change. And, of course, my perspective is much different than yours. Mm -hmm. And you've been out here on the West Coast, so you saw it blow up even faster. So the, changes, the change over the last decade has been even more. So this is, this is really interesting to watch. When you first opened up the gym, what was, what was the – what was it like? <laughs> like what was what was CrossFit like? What was what was running a, a, a box like? Um, well, still, <clears throat> pretty much nobody knew what CrossFit was. So, uh, if there were maybe three boxes at the time, um, right around 2004, 2005, when I started training CrossFit, and then 2007. Oh, you, so you were doing CrossFit since like 04, 05? Like 03. God, so, uh, you are back, a super OG. And that was back when, like, Greg and Lauren were still teaching L1. Did oh, you go yeah. up there? <laughs> totally, yep. yeah. I went mm -hmm. up to Santa Cruz several times. That was back when you would always – I mean, if you were the new guy at uh, at the the level one, you might get a, invited to sit next to Greg, you know. So wow. it was very small. There were, like, you know, 30 people in the world doing, doing CrossFit. And so uh, Jeff and Mickey Martin up at Brand X, well, that was the first CrossFit affiliate in San Diego County. Mm -hmm. um, CrossFit San Diego was the first in the city of San Diego. So I was training up there in Ramona, and they encouraged me to start training people in Poway. So that was like my garage, my front yard, and, uh, you know, three people started with. It was like my three friends I could talk into working out with me, come That's work awesome. out. And that was the beginning. And back then, starting in a garage gym was totally doable, like – Everyone accepted that that made sense, right. and mm -hmm. if you had a garage gym, it was super cool. People would come work out with you then. I don't yeah. know how easy it would be to get away with that now. Yeah, we, I, I think we can get away with less now, and, and right. that, that's one of the things that we've witnessed, right? Mm -hmm. um, so what were what have been, I guess, some of the biggest challenges? So opening in 07, uh, what are some of the changes you've seen that uh, box owners might need to be aware of? And I, I, I think talking to you is really helpful because – I think there's a lot of people that have been that have owned a gym for a while, and maybe things didn't turn out exactly the way they thought they would, or it was really easy to get and keep members previously, where it's become more difficult. Yeah, well, we're dealing with with, uh, with different people. So, in the beginning, it's pioneers and early adopters, and the the expectation's different. 
Like when you're an early adopter, you don't expect everything to be polished. You expect you don't it care. to be rough. You don't care. Yeah. You just want to be part of something new. Dirty sure. garage. Dirty garage. Yeah, Didn't it's matter. like, is it cool if I use your bathroom? No, RLP in the street, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, that's not so cool anymore? <laughs> <laughs> whatever. That explains um, so much. <laughs> you know, cops the showing up at like 5.30 a.m. Yeah, the cops been leaving, uh, the neighbors been leaving letters on my door. You know? yeah. Yeah. They did. We actually almost signed up a, a responding officer one time, but that's a different story. <laughs> <laughs> Just awesome. from loud weights in the, mm -hmm. in the front yard. Um, but yeah, the, the expectation was just way different back then. Yep. And now that the general majority knows about this thing, CrossFit, and wants to try it out, they expect to come into a box and have it be polished, have everything make sense, everything super dialed in. And um, also, um, you know, they need more education because they come in and it's like, cool, so this is, so you have a lot of locations, right? They're like, okay, so um, what's different about the CrossFit down the street, or there's a lot yep. more gyms now mm -hmm. that are CrossFit affiliates. And so there's that education piece on, like, why everyone's different. And the important thing is to stand out. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What have you found that has helped you stand out that, I mean, uh, from what I understand about what's happened with you is there was a point in which you found it difficult to stand out, and you've since uh, made changes that have made it much easier. Yeah, a lot. So I, I was just following the model of build it and they will come and do a good job and people will stay and that's that's really it, right? And that, that worked. Was, and that was the conversation in the beginning. That was it. So we moved into this spot with maybe like 30 members. It was pretty slow growth from 2010 up till 2012, but it was enough. It was enough. And then mm -hmm. all of a sudden things really blew up and next thing you knew we had like almost 200 members mm -hmm. and um, it didn't really work very well. Like, past that 150 mark, it was, like, me trying to own all the culture yeah. and and manage 12 part-time trainers because it always started with, like, hey, man, you know what? I'd like to teach a couple classes for you. And, yeah. okay, cool. And that works when it's, like, a smaller club sort of environment mm -hmm. and feel to it. But when you're trying to transition into an actual business, it just doesn't work anymore. Sure. So, um, what was the question again? <laughs> I, I guess, uh, so what you know, what... What was it like coming up to a challenge where you're running the old model and then you start feeling the plateau? And then what were changes you made to, to break through that plateau? Right. Well, the first thing was, was education. So before anything really changed, we had a lot of members. Things seemed like they were going smooth, but I just had this feeling. Like there was something I wasn't doing and mm -hmm. that it wasn't sustainable and I needed to figure out what that was. So that's right. when I started listening to, to Barbell Shrugged and... Um, among some other things, I just started listening to a lot more business podcasts, uh, reading business books, tons of books and books on tape and podcasts, just as much information as I could get. Books on tape. Oh, yeah. So oh, yeah. 1990s. That's awesome. Uh, uh, <laughs> <laughs> Audible. We're talking about Audible. We're talking about Audible. So, you know, turning. I was just like, I just, I had, I just had a flashback of like sticking Zig Ziglar tapes Zig Zig into my dad's <laughs> tape deck in the truck. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So it is audible. I guess I just call it books on tape. So. <laughs> the, we're going to totally do that now. That's the new so, norm. So. I'm listening to a great new book on tape. It's fantastic. Check so it's it cool. So I, had, I mean, I had classes covered, so people were coaching for me. I'd come in here bright and early, just get in the office and just get down on, on learn some information. And uh, when, when you guys came out with the Barbell Business podcast, that was just like life-changing for me because there were so many things that I didn't know. How long ago know. did you start studying business? Because I think uh, I, I know for Doug and I uh, – for certain, we spent a decade of our life or longer only studying fitness. Yeah. Like fitness, fitness, fitness. And then and then one day we realized, oh, shit, we have to learn some business if we actually want to, to help people. So at what point, how long ago was that that you had that, that realization? Because it's usually like a, a, a shift for someone. It's the, where they're like, oh, I got to study business now. Yeah, it was, it was maybe close to three years ago, maybe two and a half years ago. But uh, I think it might have taken me a little bit longer just because before I quit my full-time job back in back when I did to really go full into the business mm -hmm. I worked in business and I was around systems and yeah. I didn't really so when I left it was part of it was like yes I get to forget about systems I don't need systems anymore it's just <laughs> this thing where I can just do whatever I want and the business will survive so um it was more realizing that that wasn't true and I needed to get back to creating some systems. Yeah, I think, yep. I think uh, one of the, the mistakes that I, I made early on and I see that's common is people think that CrossFit Gym is special. 
and that right. the rules like, don't apply. The rule, yeah, yeah, the rules of business don't apply. Mm-hmm. And then after a while, I'm like, oh, if I learn about business in this other industry, it helps me over here. Oh, it's all the same. Yeah, yeah th- it, that assumption is is killing a lot of people, I think. And it really is. And um, and probably the biggest thing that I put into place right away was an actual sales process, where before it was. I was so used to having that early adopter mentality or that early adopter right. person come in that it was like, all right, come in and, you know, try it out for a couple of weeks and let me know, you know, if yeah. you like it. Cool. And then, and then, um, you know, some would sign up and some wouldn't sign up and that was just okay because if they didn't sign up, they weren't the right fit. And that's just what we thought. Yeah. But now, um, the first thing that we put in was the sales process. And so we'll bring someone in and actually make that connection right off the bat that's the very first thing is just establishing that trust getting to know the person and then it's really easy from there to say okay cool well looks like these are your pain points this is what you need help solving here's how we solve it and um do you want to do it and then that's and that's it And all of a sudden instead of having about maybe 30 percent of the people getting it on their own and signing up it became eight or nine out of ten yeah nice It, Nice. it takes all the guesswork out of the whole thing for the 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 potential client because they're coming in and the early adopter mindset or approach to sales, which was just like, well, I'm almost going to like make you work for it. Like, well, you're going to find me. I'm kind of hidden in the back. I have no great process. I probably won't get back to you right away. If you leave a voicemail or send us an email, website's not laid out great either. And like, it's like we, we were just cool with making everybody work for it. And if they jump through the hoops, it'll be like, well, try it out. And if you want to sign up, let me know. And it was like cool to do that. And that's so not even an option anymore because the average consumer is like, Dude, I'm used to being like not catered to, but I'm I'm being used to being met to where I need to be sure. because every other organization that I'm interested in and whatever services have really put a lot of thought and energy into creating a process to like bring me into the fold. And then here you are doing the exact opposite and it just doesn't work anymore. So that's uh, a, for you was a big shift in actually going through organizing it and setting yourself and ultimately the client up for success. I, I think that in order to do that, to step away from the old way of doing it and into the new, takes a, a high level of humility a lot of times, especially yeah. when the old way worked for a while. To be able to go, you know what? I'm going to put my shit aside. I'm not, you know, I'm like, I'm not <clears throat> as important. Like, the, the fact that I, someone has to jump through my hoops is not nearly as important as like, oh, I need to go meet this person and meet them where they're at and be of service to them. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Angela, you work with a, a lot of our, um, with all of the affiliates that we we help build their business through the coaching program, through Logic. I mean, this is one of the first things that you attack. Absolutely. Um, you need to think about it like the website is, you know, the, the first view and then <coughs> that first event when people are coming in and how you're greeting them and how you're, you know, even have a defined sales event, I think is like one of the most important things. Not that, oh, you want to do this? Here you go. Like not, that's not really happening in business. And I think just having that written out and understood and then – working through anything where at least for for me as a gym owner previously um having the assumption that sales are bad and like if we do this we're selling out to the man or it's not authentic anymore and it's not real and in reality it's like no this is when you actually become a professional at what you do and by having this all defined it just makes the experience that much better and it's the first experience that you're going to have with the client face to face yeah and we're coaches Mm -hmm. our job is to help people attain their goals and for me the website is a coaching piece Mm -hmm. the sales process is a coaching piece this is an all an extension of coaching so if you if you want to segment and go you know what uh sales is this and then my offering is a completely different thing and there's this line drawn when someone signs this piece of paper and they pay Mm -hmm. to me i like to treat everybody as a client and whether they're paying me or not and i'm going to coach them and the sales process is just coaching just trying to Offer them the thing that's going to help them reach their goals and, and, and just give good advice at that point and, yep. l- and listen. I mean, uh, what I do when I'm making a sell and what I'm doing when I'm coaching, or it, it looks very much the same. Providing solutions. That's yeah. totally, all it is. Totally agree. Um, and so in a consultation, I'm coaching the person right then. Yeah. I mean, I'll get them up moving. I'm moving. I'm like, here's where we're going to start. Like if we're talking about we're going to start at the – the very base level of some of these movement patterns Mm -hmm. and assess where you are and look for any sort of movement deficiencies. And then from there, we're going to build and we're going to talk about how single leg movements are very similar. So maybe we're lunging, maybe we're stepping up on something, maybe we're even running and we're moving and I'm coaching him through this, this consultation. And then 
I mean, right there, they can tell, like, do I like being coached by this guy? Do I like being coached by Jason? And if so, like, let's let's do it more. Let's sign yeah. yeah, totally. Yeah, and you're and you're ultimately too. If you zoom out a click, you're you're really coaching them either into your gym or you're coaching them onto another solution because ultimately we're not a fit for everyone who walks through the door, and that's really what the sales process is. It's really just a two way interview and getting to know each other and like hey i really want to get to know you so i can understand if i can help you and if i can it's my job to help you understand that and if not then i'm gonna i'm it's my duty to help point you in the right direction totally right yeah. i have sent someone to orange theory yeah yep that's there what they go. were looking for yeah yeah what uh what are some uh i guess uh things that you changed over the last decade like what were some like maybe a top three or top five biggest things you did that made a big difference in your business well <clears throat> most of the changes have come in the past couple of years the really big changes and uh i got so much awesome advice from the barbell business podcast that the very first time i heard about barbell logic and i had been really trying to figure out how to tweak my website to make it better I'm like, I was thinking about um, taking on learning Infusionsoft and trying to kind of hack all these pieces together that I'd heard from various podcasts <coughs> between lead pages, a CRM, my own website, like making it look cool. Mm -hmm. And it was a really daunting task. And so when I first, very first heard about Barbell Logic, I literally was almost home. I signed up for a discovery call, mm -hmm. like right away. Mm -hmm. And that was the best thing I ever did. Mm -hmm. And getting that website in place was huge. But what's been even more important and bigger has been the business coaching. Yeah. Because that website's awesome. It's their first, it's the first interaction, right? It's that first impression. Um, but if I don't know how to grow personally as, as, a, as a, you know, gym owner, then um, I'm just going to get stuck. Yeah. And everybody's different. So no matter how great of a, a system that you put together for everybody, like, for example, maybe the general program for the gym, might be pretty good, like really good for the group. But if someone wants to get further, there needs to be some additional programming. And so that additional programming is the business coaching. Mm -hmm. And yeah. that's awesome. And, and, and you, everyone's different. Yeah, and you were one of the first adopters, too, with Barbell Logic. You started, I mean, we're now at like two-year mark or so, right? Mm -hmm. And it's it's been such an awesome evolution with you from where you started is like you were the quintessential like traditional CrossFit box, yet you knew better and you were like, I'm – I need to rip the bandaid off. I need to do this. Mm -hmm. And you, you dove in, you committed to evolving as a business owner, as, as a leader in your tribe. And you two now have been working together for quite some time. Maybe and six months, seven mm -hmm. months. Yeah. Like, like really that. digging in yeah. now. And you've, you've like really caught on to, I think the, the bigger next picture for you and the business. Mm -hmm. uh, what is, what is kind of the, the realization been, I think, and, and I'll ask actually Angelo first. Mm -hmm. You started working with Jason, and you've really kind of helped him now really transform into that next that next level and progression with the business. What's that been like? Yeah, so when I first started talking to Jason, I think the biggest thing that um, kind of went off in my head is he wants to offer something different, and that's okay. Like, mm -hmm. I think we look at what the gym down the street is doing or what another successful affiliate is doing. And it's like, well, th what they're doing is what I need to be doing. And if I'm not doing that, it's completely wrong. And so Jason and I went to the drawing board in the beginning and it was like, well, what kind of service do you want to offer? What is the price point that's really, you know, fair for that service? And let's start putting that together. And we redid his intake process to fit what he wanted and not just what was cookie cutter to what somebody else did. Mm -hmm. Um, and he's been much more successful at it, much more confident about um, selling it. And uh, it makes us happy as business coaches, and I'm sure for him that it's at a higher price point too. Um, <laughs> so that's that's also great for the business side. And uh, so, yeah, Jason, you could you could carry off that and talk a little bit more about what we did. Well, I, I, let me add to that real quick. Mm -hmm. it, it's the, the point I think that okay. you're making is like it's – we take a different approach to the whole business coaching idea because – if we if we could kind of sum up the last like 10 years we've been working now with affiliate owners, there is no one size fits all model. Totally. Period. You can't look at it as like, well, this is the one way you're supposed to do it. It in our process and how we approach coaching and how we are going to we work with the affiliate owner is to really understand, Jason, who are you? Where are you at? What are your strengths and weaknesses? Where do you want to go? Let's define what that success means to you. Not what I think is success, but what's important to you? What do you want this thing to look like monetarily? What do you want your roles to look like? What kind of impact you want to make? Who do you want to work with? 
based on that, then actually going to the drawing board and mapping out, all right, so how does pricing need to look? How do our membership options need to look? What does your intake and intro offer need to look like? And going piece by piece through the whole business. And then you use the tools like a site or the logic like back end to just make sure that that strategy happens more efficiently, right? Right. Oh, yeah. And that's and that's what you guys are doing. That's just that makes you stand apart so much is that that ability to customize it because we all are different. Um, so working with Angelo, um, and the first the first place we really started to break through was I was talking to him about our our um, fundamentals program or onboarding program, and how we offer both a private option and a class option. But I was just really not getting the results that I wanted out of the class option. Like I felt like I couldn't I couldn't really like create the same relationships with people in that environment but every time I had a one-on-one client come in it was it was like we were high-fiving you know first day um, getting super tight really quick really easy to coach them that way really easy to build that trust and just Mm -hmm. create a relationship that was way more enjoyable for both both of us and so I told Angela I'm like hey look I just want to get rid of fundamentals classes go all private Mm -hmm. and his question was like okay well what happens when they finish private fundamentals or private onboarding and then they go into a group class? How does that change their perception of value? Because they just had you one-on-one and now they're in a group with 15 other people. Um, are you worried that there might be some sort of drop-off in their, in, um, their perception of the value? And I, I could see where he was coming from on that. So we talked more about it and we, we ended up with was... Um, saying, you know what, what I really want is people still to have that class environment because that's fun. It's fun to come in and warm up with people. Yeah. No one wants to come in and do a, do a, you know, a written down warm up on their own. Mm-hmm. You come in and you do a warm up with some people, do some speed training or agility work at the end. That's a lot of fun. Um, hitting the workout with a group, that's a lot of fun. So let's keep that intact. Let's not get rid of that, right? Let's keep that intact. And then what do people really need besides that? Well, they need some customized programming if they have specific goals. Mm-hmm. Um, they still need some one-on-one time with it with a coach mm-hmm. um, they still are going to need some ongoing nutrition support and if they want to go deeper we're going to do some outside diagnostics too like we're going to bring in some body composition scanning like DEXA scans some blood work and we want to put all this together in a total health and fitness package to where if I could just think what would I really want myself as a client this is what I want to give people Mm-hmm. Like yeah. If I can really do anything I want with a client, this is what I want to do. I really don't want to work one-on-one with a client every day. That's not what excites me. Mm-hmm. I want to work with a client a couple times a month, and then the rest of the time watch them killing it in the class because mm-hmm. yeah. there's more fun. I, I, I imagine that it became much easier to sell something that you would buy yourself. Totally. And yeah. I, I think a lot of times when people are like, oh, sales is hard. Of course it's hard. If you're selling something that you don't don't actually believe in. Yep. And you created a system, you created a business that you would be a member of yourself, a client yourself. Mm -hmm. And when you do that, yeah, everything becomes much easier. I think that if, if you feel like you're, you're hitting a wall or hitting the ceiling and your business, that's, that's exactly what you should be looking at. Am I even offering the thing that I really believe in? Because I think a lot of times, uh, for some reason, we don't think of that first. We start looking around the other boxes. It's mm-hmm. like, oh, how are they doing it? What are they the selling? Shit what they're doing. Right. Yeah. Like we, let's not look at them. Let's look at what works for us. So that, that's really exciting to hear that you made those changes. And it, it sounds like it became easier to sell. And the other thing I, I heard was that you do well with people one on one in that first connection. Mm-hmm. And I don't think that's everybody. I think I think most people connect better one to one. And there's certain individuals that do better with a group. Mm-hmm. Like I know myself, like I'd rather coach a dozen people at once. That's just, I can connect with that many people better than I can with somebody one-on-one actually. And it's, it's interesting. Like I can sell better that way, but I think a lot of people, you know, it's the other way around and there's no right or wrong or anything like that. And that was, and that was a hard thing to figure out too, because I would prefer to coach a group yeah. than coach a one-on-one private training session. Um, I do well with groups as well, but when it's when it's establishing that trust right off the bat, yeah. mm-hmm. that's where it's where it's one on one that works for me. Closing so, a, yep. closing a group is is a whole other skill set. Yeah, yeah. And and for and just a little note for anyone who's listening to this who struggles with sales and is just like, man, I have a really hard time <coughs> getting out in front of people and making the the offer. Take a look at what you're offering. You know, it oftentimes it's someone who's the, they're you know they're the business owner. 
it's their shop and yet they're selling something just because that's what they think the other person wants or that's what the guy down the street yeah. wants just take a look at what you really believe in you know take a look at who do i want to work with how can i serve them best <laughs> and something that I'm gonna truly believe in and start repositioning and setting yourself up for success yeah. so you can establish a great relationship, get people to understand what you're really about and sell something that you really believe in. There's no faster way to become a kick-ass salesperson than to be you know, pitching something you really believe in because yeah. you're gonna have no problem overcoming objections and connecting with someone about it because you're mm -hmm. like, you're so pumped about it, right? Oh yeah. And, and, especially, and people feel that and I think that so many people are used to you know, kind of just getting herded through like, uh, you know, like a group sales process and group training. And it's such an important opportunity to understand like, hey, you may prefer coaching in the group environment and you like that dyna custom dynamic that you've created here in the gym, but you also understand like, I have to connect with someone and create that trust, cr really understand where they're at, meet them there, build the relationship and set, set it up for success for the long term which allows you to then get into the group environment and to be able to coach in the group environment rather than just like, well, I like group, people are signing up for group, I get it, mm -hmm. but the, you also have to make it about them first and be able to overcome their objections and answer their questions and make them feel like, okay, I get what this is about, I get how this applies to me, and you say, cool, and we do this in a group and we're gonna have our one-on-one -on -one interactions or whatever your, mm -hmm. your deal is, and you, can, you will find yourself in a completely different position for success on conversions and you're by the way you've now fixed your attention issues for the most part because you've actually connected with people they trust you they know what it's about expectations have been managed um it's just it's so valuable to to start your relationships that way and you and you at the end of the day you can make it however you want yeah. right and it's just set yourself up for success and set your client up for success I don't, and I don't even think that the one-on-one -on -one only option is right for everybody. No. I think it's, it's not just what you would want, but also look at your demographic outside of your gym. So we're in Poway, right? Um, people, people want a more personalized service in Poway. I'm not by like San Diego State University where I might try to target more yeah. competitive CrossFitters. Like I might think, or I might, uh, I would definitely do a group onboarding there because that makes sense for college students if i was there i'd be targeting the sorority girls yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, so it would be different right but just because of where we are um i noticed that people that were that were opting for the foundation or the onboarding classes was because it's like okay well that's the that's the less expensive option i'll just take that whatever but they're also looking at it as like a hoop they had to jump through before they got to do classes they looked at it as something they needed to get signed off and then they were done they didn't value it they didn't appreciate it mm -hmm. but every single person that came through the one-on-ones, it was they super valued it. They were like, "This that's the best thing ever. Thank you so much." Yep. So Amazing. that just works for here. Amazing. Yep. Yeah. Um, actually, let's take a break real quick, and I'll, mm -hmm. when we come back, I want to talk about uh, you raise your prices mm -hmm. and simultaneously s got better at sales, mm -hmm. which is every time super counterintuitive. Every time we so raise prices, I want to dig into that. Hey, I'm Jason, and I'm the owner and head coach at Iron Fire Athletics, home of CrossFit Poway. Before implementing Barbell Logic, we were really struggling to get people into the gym. Uh, leads had just fallen flat. And it really hadn't always been that way. We've been a, a CrossFit affiliate since 2007. And back then, early adopters and you know their friends, who they would refer, was, uh, was enough for steady growth. Um, 2007, 2008, it's definitely like that. Then 2010 to 13, maybe 14, there was rapid growth. I mean, I know it was happening in lots of places um, in the country and around the world, but right here in San Diego, it was, it was pretty explosive. People were knocking down the doors trying to get in here, and it was hard to keep track of them. Uh, we, I mean, we loved it. We loved the new faces, and it was really exciting. Uh, it was a really exciting time. We were growing quickly, um, and it forced us to put some systems in place, and that was great. But besides that, we weren't really doing much to stand out in the um, increasingly crowded San Diego fitness scene. We just kind of were relying on, you know, our website saying established 2007 and like, okay, that's going to prove that we've been doing it a long time and we probably know what we're talking about. By 2015, that wasn't working at all. The traffic to our website fell flat, mainly because we had no marketing strategy at all and any posts to social media were random. Um, and we just stopped getting new leads. We went months before we would hear from someone uh, who was interested in joining the gym. I'm like, okay, I really need to start 
taking the business seriously, um, figuring out you know where the jam is and why we're not getting anybody, why we're not being heard out there. And uh, I started looking into having a pro website built, um, getting CRM for managing leads and member retention. Because, I mean, any lead that we got, I could not afford to lose them. I needed the best possible way to get them through the doors and into the gym. I was kind of shopping all over the place and not really finding any products or services that I really loved. And, uh, and it wasn't until I was listening to the podcast and the crew, I heard the crew talk about Barbell Logic. And um, I was like, wait, what are they talking about? Yes, like this sounds exactly like what I'm looking for. I was super excited. As soon as I got home, I pulled up Barbell Logic on, on Google and I uh, watched the demo video. I'm like, yes, absolutely. Um, finished watching that video, scheduled a call with Marcus. As soon as our new website launched, we started getting leads again. And we had three new leads in the first week. And I don't think we had three leads in the six months before that. In our first three months, we converted 37 new members and we're still growing. Our fundamentals program always has people in it. Having Logic is like having a web developer, a personal assistant, and a business coach and paying them $2 an hour each. It's so easy to use. As soon as someone opts in at the website, they go into your funnel and there's a defined process that takes them from lead to member. And that clears up a ton of time and attention. So you know what I really appreciate about the Barbell Logic team is that they're constantly adding value and looking for new ways to improve the service. Um, they put me with marketing genius Angelo Cisco since I was struggling so much with marketing and uh, he's my business coach. And having a business coach is a total game changer. I'm starting to see how the magic works in marketing and it's really cool. Barbell Logic has been one of the best investments I've made in myself in the business, hands down. And I'm sure in a year or two from now, looking back, I'll, I'll say it's the best investment. Um, if you're considering Barbell Logic, do it. You'll be so happy you did. I'm working on marketing, like that's my thing. Um, you might need help with something else, but whatever it is, doesn't matter. Sales process, retention, uh, whatever you're struggling with, the Barbell Logic team will help you. And we were getting into uh, was simultaneously raising prices and selling more. Mm -hmm. Who'd have thought? Yeah. Great concept. Um, so <laughs> <laughs> the great um, everybody wins. So when Jason and I started working together, one of the things that we came up with or one of the programs that we really wanted to put in place was <laughs> sort of a, a higher value version of CrossFit uh, and just more, you know, more in-depth, as you mentioned earlier. And so to do that, we had to charge a premium or it wouldn't have been fair for him, his time in the business. And then so he's been selling a higher s value service, charging more for it, and people are happy to pay it because he's delivering on everything that he says. Um I think this is great, too, for a lot of gym owners that are starting to realize that maybe 500 member gyms are not what they really want. Mm -hmm. um, they just, you know, thought that that's what they wanted at one time, and it's not something that's easy to manage, or it's not even what they really enjoy and what they really want. I mean, nothing against the people that want to do that. I mean, there is a place for that in there, but most likely your service is going to be really hard to be premium or offer a very high barrier at 500 members for people. Yep. Um, it's just understanding your business and really what you want, and that's why we shifted over to this model and uh, seems to be working very well, and Jason feels super confident about it. Um, over our time working together as well, uh, we spent a lot of time talking about creating content, which is not always the most easiest thing. I think it's one of those things like, all right, so – I'm getting the sales down. I understand I need business focus. Now I have a sales process. Now I want people to buy it. <laughs> I want people to buy into it. And so we started really digging in on just the Jason's ability to be constantly creating content very consistently and like who's he's, who's he's identifying and who he wants to talk to specifically for his service because he mentioned he has such a great idea of who's in his area. And mm -hmm. so that's what he's putting out content with. Um, why don't you talk a little bit about everything that, you've been doing constantly with Facebook and all that. Okay. Yeah. So, um, 
Angelo convinced me that, that <laughs> he made me do it. <laughs> that writing content really is important. That's really <laughs> valuable. And and it just takes consistency like anything else. I mean, if you're going to work out twice a month, you're not going to get any results. Like if you post something twice a month, you're not going to get any results. Yeah. But you need to do it every day. And um, it wasn't until I started posting every single day that I started getting the engagement I was looking for on social media. Mm -hmm. So it really took someone who knew that it was that important to tell me that. And then since when, you, when you're working with a coach, um, a business coach or any coach, like they're somewhere where you want to be. So it's really easy to trust that they're coming from a place that the place they're coming from. So I said, all right, finally, um, I'm going to, I'm going to really commit to this. At first it was just one more thing I had to do. Mm -hmm. So I would get all my programming done. I would go through my normal schedule throughout the week and then try to block out time to do that. It wasn't until I said, okay, I'm doing that first. I'm going to write all that first. And yeah. if that means that I'm up till midnight programming when I don't want to be, well, so what? Cause that's the stuff I know how to do. I know it's going to get done. So this stuff, I'm just going to do it first. Use up all the, uh, you know, creativity on this. That's right. And get sure. this out first. Yeah, definitely. So content is huge. Um, so our first step oh. was was kind of identifying who you really were t looking to target. Right. And talking a little bit about their pain points and challenges and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And then take off there. Tell me more about how you, you know, identified them and we went through it and who you're targeting and how that message is coming out. I think the best thing to do is just look at your favorite members. Okay. Mm -hmm. Right? And yeah. so create an avatar in one of your favorite members' likeness. Mm -hmm. And then when you write, you just write to that person. Mm -hmm. And that's it. So um, we have a lot of a lot of engineers mm -hmm. um, that work <laughs> locally. And so a lot of them mm -hmm. want to want to come in and work out hard and be competitive, but not necessarily compete at like at a at a high level like the games, but still come in and have a place to compete in the gym. Mm -hmm. um, <coughs> so it's identifying who it is that you're talking to and then talking to that person. And maybe it's even okay to have two av avatars mm -hmm. because we have sure. men and we have women. We're really looking for as close to a 50-50 split as possible. Mm -hmm. So we market to both. We talk to both. And another thing that was really helpful for me getting organized was something that Doug mentioned in another show, um, a past show, about having a rhythm. Mm -hmm. So I just scheduled out, okay, um, I'm going to do, because we're leading into a nutrition seminar, like I'm going to do Monday, Wednesday, Friday nutrition. We're going to talk about movement on Tuesday, Thursday, and then I'm going to talk about the importance, the importance for play for adults on Saturdays, and then something having to do with um, either rituals or routines or something philosophical on Sundays. So I just kind of have that whole rhythm worked out, and it's mm -hmm. a lot easier to stick to rather than saying, oh, it's Thursday, what should I, what should I post about? Yeah, sure. I really like the concept of writing to a specific person in mind. I think a lot of times when we sit down to write, we end up wanting to talk about ourselves. So when we're not, when we're not, um, yeah, when we're not in that mindset of when we're trying to talk to everybody, it's like this is what we have going on. But the moment you go, oh, I'm going to talk to John, oh, and then I was like, oh, I know what John wants. I know what he desires. I know what his his challenges are. I'm just going to write about him, you know, in a way. And it really takes for me. It takes a lot of the the creative stress away. It's mm -hmm. like, oh, I know what he needs to hear. That's easy. And and because I think a lot of times we end up getting caught up in, you know, what is it the thing I want to say? Like, who cares? Or, or even worse, trying to get it for everyone. Like, yep, I'm trying to totally. write this so, so everyone can catch it. And it's like, look, that's not who you're talking to. Identify who you want to resonate with and write it for John, right? Identify mm -hmm. who your avatar or avatars are. Just write for him. You know what he thinks is funny. You know what he's interested in. You know how to position this so that he's going to go, oh, got it. That's all you need to do. Come from that place, prioritize it, do it first. And all of a sudden you go from being someone who literally was doing everything to avoid creating content, right? Like you said, super inconsistent, put it to the last thing to now it's a priority. And now you, you have, you've reaped the rewards from it. So you see the value and it's no longer hard. So now you're just like, dude, I'm knocking that. I'm checking that box first every day. Yeah. And it just feels cool. It's what I do. I'm even connecting with people that aren't, aren't even in San Diego that I'm probably never going to get into this gym unless maybe they come out to vacation, but mm -hmm. it's okay. I could still help more people than just in my community mm -hmm. and that just in my local community. And that just feels really good too. It just keeps, keeps everything kind of going in that direction. So question for you guys. So what's you guys have gone through the, the process of, of kind of redefining, you know, wh what you want this business to look like and, and really where you want it to go. You guys have set goals. You've restructured the offers. You've restructured the onboarding and sales process. What's next? What are you going to make this poor guy do next <laughs> in the process? Whatever makes him uncomfortable. <laughs> 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 I 
No, so now that the sales and marketing, uh, at least the baseline marketing strategy has been set, um, Jason and I are going to start working towards like higher order marketing where we're doing more ad campaigns, kind of really mapping out the year and understanding the, understanding the ebbs and flows of his business and, you know, when we could really, you know, put out an ad and develop, you know, whatever, a trial or whatever that is and make sure that we're going to make the maximum impact with that. Um, so it's great now to, after we've had these baseline things kind of figured out that now it's like higher order strategy. And now it's like we're going to make this happen. This is how this is going to work and more just more development in a business sense and where Jason's really aware of what's going to happen in the business so he could stay patient and sometimes more understanding in others and, and ride these waves and make it so much better for him as a business owner and everybody else. Yeah, there's people. People forget that there's a method to the madness when it comes to like building building a business. And you know, it, it's funny because we're we as as coaches in strength and conditioning and CrossFit specifically, like we're so used to the idea of like, well, there's you know, there's progressions, and first you have to do this before you can do this. And it's like it makes perfect sense in the context of the gym. And the second you start talking about business, they're like, hey, I need to market, I need to run ads, and it's like you have no sales process, none of your shit so, makes sense. It's a total disaster. <laughs> you are literally just gonna light your credit card on fire mm -hmm. yeah. by doing yeah. that. I've done and it. Right? You, you see it. <laughs> you <run> it. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, I put a thousand bucks into Facebook ads this month. Let's go. Uh, yeah. And, and what happens? Nothing. You, everyone's disappointed. Well, it's right? so funny. When Except for Facebook. When people go, yeah. yeah. <laughs> when, people, when people, well, even Facebook's not happy about that because now you're going to stop using them, you know? Mm -hmm. Like, right. the, uh, I hear people say, Oh, I tried Facebook ads. They don't work. I'm like, oh, really? No, I've tried marketing and it oh, doesn't yeah. work. Oh, yeah. And it's just like, well, tell me about what you did. Well, I boosted some Facebook ads. Crickets. It's yeah, like, man. you. that's not marketing. Marketing yeah. is, you have to start at the core. And marketing is like, there's several layers to it. And running an ad is one of the outer layers. That's sure. not a like a core element to it. That's something you're using to amplify the core strategy and plug into and say, okay, cool. Now we want to attract more attention to this part of our strategy. Let's turn up the volume with some ads. And the, the point I'm, I guess I'm trying to make is that when you look at how you're approaching your business strategy and like, hey, I want to grow or maybe the business isn't where you want it to be and where you think you know you want it to go. You know, it's like, I know this isn't right, but I know I want it to go somewhere else and you can't really define it. There's a process you can go through to say, okay, like let's let's distill it down to you know what you want this business to look like and why, and who you want to work with and why. And then the when you have some additional help, like how you hire a coach in the gym when you're like, hey, I want to go compete in something like CrossFit. Well, what's your training background? I don't know. I've gone to the gym a few times. It's like, okay, let's start by like let's gather the pieces together. Let's figure out where you're at. Let's let's identify how often you like to work out. You want to do mornings, you like the evenings. How's your nutrition doing? You have to like take inventory on all this stuff first and get a lay of the land. There's a process to that in business, and mm -hmm. uh, the the business coaching program that we that we have in place and that that you're a part of is like there's not just a a checklist that the coach is going through. It is about truly getting to understand. Jason and mm -hmm. where this business is and what's your past been and where do you want to go in the future and what you want your personal life to look like so you can progress and what do you want the business to look like? How do those, how do those intertwine? And then building a strategy around that. And there's, because there's fundamental principles that apply across the board, but there isn't one sales method or one onboarding or pricing model or like contract structure. Mm -hmm. This is all about truly getting to know what's going to serve you and your goals and your definition of success best and get you there. And then putting the pieces together in the right order, starting with the sales strategy first. I don't know how many people contact us. They're like, hey, I know you guys do marketing. I want to hire you guys to do my marketing. It's like, okay, but hold on. Let's let's make sure they like, take inventory and, and we're marketing into something that's going to work. Mm -hmm. It's like, well, I don't want to waste my time doing sales. It's a waste of time. I want to just get to the marketing part. It's like, you don't understand. You're, you're going to, you're, like I said, you're going to light your credit card on fire mm -hmm. or just start burning money when if we got the sales part right or we make sure we get the offer right or the onboarding and the retention strategy right content strategy right that it's way more cost effective and much easier and much more fun and rewarding for everyone involved to to build now the business and now you can start to market and it's it's just more rewarding all across the board yeah so i think people are are really just thinking that the way to market is just that short game approach that's yep. what i thought i thought it was like okay well it's time to market so i need to get ready to spend some money and it wasn't working, I wasn't sure why. Mm -hmm. um, but really what needs to be established first is that long game approach. So you get that built out first and then you figure out what's working, what's hitting from there and, and target specific pieces of that. And that's, that's I think, what we're gonna move towards next. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And the thing is too with Jason is 
and we didn't bring this up and I just thought of it now is all the sales process and systems are documented so he could train them <laughs> to everybody that is going to work for him that is going to intern for him so it's not just about Jason always having to do it yes. um, but it's best when it's in my head though <laughs> yeah <it's> a, no <laughs> one's going to do it like me yeah, yeah all that stuff and so you know taking some time to really get that out of Jason's brain and tweaking it and making sure that it's uh, we could teach it to people and they would understand it is is a part of the process that needs to be done unless you just want to coach 40 hours a week to the day you die there's really no other way to do it yep it's it's not it's not scalable if it's dependent on you no matter even if you're the best there is you can turn that into a process and teach people how to do it so that you, even though you may like to do that, you can energize that role because you like it. Mm -hmm. But what, what about when the day comes when you, you know, you have a, a kid that's due and you're like, well, the business, I guess, isn't going to grow for the next two weeks because I can't be there doing sales or I want to take a vacation for once every, mm -hmm. you know, two decades. You know, it's like <laughs> you, you have to be able to build it around processes so you mm -hmm. can be like, okay, cool, Mike, you're going to stand in for me while I'm gone. I'm going to be gone for two weeks. And here's the process I'm going to train you and it's going to be the same thing because you've turned it into a process and a system so, around what makes this unique and how you've approached it. Yeah. Jason, how did you do vacations before you had systems in place? Uh, <laughs> leave and pray or don't leave. <laughs> yeah, it was more of the leave and pray. <laughs> but also I had more of like a management by abdication style. Anyway, it was like, all right, you're in charge. You know what I mean? And that, um, and that's just, it's, Seemed like that's what I was supposed to be doing. Now they got it, but really things don't work well that way. Yeah. And then also with this new system, it's not like it just said, "Hey, Angela, I want to, you know, I want to put this thing together." He's like, "Cool, what do you want to do?" All right, let's do it. Oh. He said, "Okay, well, let's structure this in phases. Let's build it out in about three phases. Maybe take three or four months to build this thing out before we go live with it. Before mm -hmm. we we offer it to the public. And that's really how anything goes. It's not like you just come up with an idea and then just." blast it out you have to build it out and that's how we ended up getting these systems and in, in uh, processes documented yeah but it took months uh, th that, okay so really important note it's like when someone walks into your gym and they're like yeah i know you know i've worked with a barbell before and you're like cool all right well what's your goal and they're like well i want to have a you know 250 pound snatch and you're like all right cool let's see where you're at and they're at like 120 pounds <laughs> and they're like okay well i want this in six months and you're like whoa buddy Right. And, and you're just like, well, we're going to let, let me check your let me check your, you know, you do an assessment and it's like they're just a mess. Everyone, you're like, dude, we've got to do all sorts of like stabilization work. You're all fucked up over <laughs> here. And they're like, but I don't want to do that. I just want to work with the barbell. And you're like, you don't get to do that. You can't do 250 without doing these reps first. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it's the same thing again in business. It's like, OK, cool. You got a goal. You want to pr promote this thing or you want to do some like paid ads. or You want to run this special program. Killer. Let's make sure all the dominoes are set up to actually hit that. Yeah. Or else you're just going to spin your wheels and you're going to wonder why, man, I put so much time and energy into, you know, you know, X, Y, and Z. And we spent money and we hired this guy and we did da, 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 and we thought we were doing everything and it didn't work out. Marketing doesn't work. Sales doesn't work. Ads mm -hmm. don't work. It's like, no, your approach didn't work. You didn't, you didn't follow the order of operations to set yourself up for success. Same thing, the same rules that apply in training where it's like, there's a progression. You want to be able to do a strict muscle up. Great. Mm -hmm. We're going to do some strict pull-ups and all sorts of shoulder and, and stability work to get you to be able to do that. Mm -hmm. You don't just get to jump up on the rings and start blowing your shoulders out. Yeah. I think everyone would understand. Do you want it? You want a 250 pound snatch or bar muscle up? You're getting there faster with a coach or on your own. Mm -hmm. Just that simple. You want to guess with a coach. And, and trash your shoulder and Googling right. different programs and seeing what works, and <laughs> <laughs> yeah. no, but, it, but that's the truth. That's how people do it. How many how many times you get on yeah. on on the on the phone with someone, Angelo, and it's like, hey, you know, what have you done in the past? They're like, well, I've been, you know, I've I've tried all this marketing. I've spent the last five years running my business. That shit doesn't work. Well, let's dig into what it was. They're just following along what other people were doing and copying and mimicking it, and not running it through their own filter of like, well, how does this apply to me and what right. we're doing and who we're serving and and so on. The basis for everything that we're doing with the business coaching program is all about taking what people want and then knowing what we know as far as, you know, application towards good business practices and then really building a system that they're confident in. Like like Jason mentioned earlier, it's like he's confident about this now, so he does it better. And he's not just like I didn't he didn't get on the phone with me. I'm like, I don't know hair across it, we have this many members, I'm really good at what we do. You do this and you have the same thing. And it wasn't like that at all, right? Mm -hmm. And so that's one of the, my favorite things is I didn't take any of our past success and say that this is the only way to do it. Yeah. Um and that's that's the whole basis for this whole program. It's it may not feel at first like it's the right thing because it's not like the get rich thing and this is the tactic but at bottom line this is what's going to keep him 
30, 40 more years in business versus yeah. six months. Well, that's the point. And, and Jason, your, your, your wife and I were actually just chatting before um, we started the show. You, she was saying you guys have like re-fallen in love with the business and you're excited about it. Your, your, your passion has been reinvigorated and that is going to reflect in how you approach everything because you, you see that you now see that this is working. There is a possibility to make this work and build a dream business that you love to be a part of and, and run. And, and it, that means you're going to be excited for your staff. You're excited for your clients, that energy people buy into. If you're not pumped, people are going to feel that no one wants to be around Eeyore all day. <laughs> who's just like, Whoa, my business sucks. This is fucking <laughs> yeah, hard. Right. That sucks. I'm going to f- go around, be around someone who's like, dude, what we do is super cool. I'm, I'm, this is what I eat, sleep and breathe. I love this stuff. Let's rock and roll. What do you want to do? Dude, it just got to that point, Marcus. It was like, <laughs> what this this is exactly what I want to do. If I'm going to be excited about coming to work, this is what I want to do. And if no one wants it, then I should just not be doing this business. Yep. Yep. So like that takes care of the fear right there. Just put it out there. Here's what I'm doing. You want to do this? You do? Mm-hmm. Hell yeah. Let's do it. Right. And, and I remember one of the first consultations I had was actually with someone who's moving to the area um, and uh, actually lives way out west from here and works northwest of the beach and came here because of the website. He's a web developer, and he's like, that's what got him here. Um, but he's also been doing CrossFit five years. He's been only lifting for five years. So the dude knows his stuff. And um, while telling, like, giving him my sales pitch, like, here's what we do. Like, here's what we offer. He was blown away by it. He's like, I haven't seen this in any gym before. He goes, this is amazing. This is what I want. Mm-hmm. And just, I kind of had, like, this prejudice that he was, um, you know, an experienced CrossFitter. So I might not be able to to pair him up with this system and it just it was totally the opposite it was amazing yeah you people people forget that's and that's a super important lesson because there's more and more people who've been do, now doing crossfit for a while who are going to start coming in your gyms it's not just the brand new oh, yeah. person who's like hey i want to try crossfit for the first time there's a larger percentage of your population or people who are relocating mm-hmm. and people don't want to downgrade or go laterally this is an opportunity for them to go to an, a better gym than maybe what they had before oh you can't go down no you're not you gonna can't, downgrade you um, you're like you know what you i had a good gym at home i'm gonna find a shit box around yeah. here somewhere <laughs> yeah. and and go through a crappy process for sales and and oh it doesn't look like they have their stuff together but you show up you you look professional online the website's a tool to position you correctly right mm-hmm. but it's not the end all be all it has to be backed up with the right offers and the right, right process and and create the right experience it needs to be one whole thing Mm-hmm. So the website served its purpose. It got you the opportunity mm-hmm. to now get in front of the guy and actually set yourself up for success because you had the right interaction with yeah. him where you were like, dude, this is what we're all about. This is what we do. Here's how it applies to you. And I was like, Phew, this is freaking awesome. You guys looked the part. I showed up and you crushed it. I'm in. And that's the opportunity. And it's and you need to set up all the dominoes. That's just the first couple. Mm-hmm. You get to do that with your whole life cycle now as you guys are starting to map out in depth. We've, we've already got kind of the macro pieces in place. Mm-hmm. And now it's about fine-tuning all the details all the way through until you've got your whole rock star formula. Yeah, and really if you're – if you're a coach who thinks that you're the shit and you have the shit that people want, then that's really all you need is the opportunity to get in front of them. Mm-hmm. And then you're going to you're gonna kill it after that. It's just getting in front of those people. Well, and setting setting the business up to allow you to do that, oh, that right? Yeah, for sure. You, you have to, the, you, you're right, because if you have a great product, you could be the best coach in the world, but if your sales and marketing sucks, no one's ever going to find out about it, right? right? Mm-hmm. And I understand the whole like, whoa, if I'm great, you know, my clients will tell their friends and so on, but it, you're okay with like a 15-year journey to like break even <laughs> totally good luck yeah. a lot of times people are like hey man i took out a loan to start this business or like i've got an investor i've got to pay back in a certain schedule and it's like look that's cool and that's reality so you have to be able to put yourself in a position to succeed and making sure the right sales processes and marketing and, and presentation and tools for websites and everything <laughs> reflects that so you maximize your opportunity to help people and show more people about it mm-hmm. and then when your people come in you've got a great referral program and your marketing and all that stuff it all needs to hum but when it does you it, it yeah. you you kind of remove all the blockers and now it's free flow. Yeah, if it was just like, hey, Angelo, I'm excited about this idea. I want to sell it for you know, 400 bucks or whatever, uh, and and I'm excited about it, so I know I can sell it. Cool. But if we didn't have it organized to where I could deliver on it, mm-hmm. then you know, in one door, out the other door, and that's that's, that's just wasting energy too. Yep. So what <coughs> what's what's to come for you? I know you guys have a, a pretty exciting agenda laid out and, and you guys are kind of elbow deep and mm-hmm. and implementing this new formula in the business and, and really seeing it. I'm actually excited to kind of probably come back and interview you again in like six, 12 months and, and see how this is all really like fully cool. taken hold. Uh, but but what's uh, what's in the future for you? 
Yeah, our, so our next step is uh, we're not at capacity. I'd like to get our gym to capacity, like talk with Angelo, figure out what makes sense for how many people. I, I certainly don't want to just allow people to continue to sign up and get too big. Mm -hmm. um, so we're going to figure out what the right number is, work towards that capacity, and then from there just do everything we can to continue to drive the value up for everyone. And um, the next piece will probably be developing the best uh, coach compensation model as possible. We need the members first, and then we'll we'll move into that next. Excellent. Yeah, I mean, if you if you have I, that's that's something I've seen in the market place a lot where it's lacking is coaches compensation. Mm -hmm. As how are you going to attract and keep coaches mm -hmm. that are top notch? You can't create the best environment for your members if your coaches compensation is subpar. Mm -hmm. Well, in my experience too, it it's like. Uh, the people with the least amount of experience have the most amount of energy. And then the people out there that you bring in, and this is just my experience, but some of you may be able to relate. People with the most experience and the most certifications on this come in and maybe don't have the most amount of energy. So mm -hmm. um, I started this internship model where um, I got in contact with some of the local colleges and right now I have a couple interns. And uh, one in particular who just started two weeks ago, she's a kinesiology major. She's graduating from SDSU uh, this spring. And so her whole internship is laid out kind of like in the order that you would need to get your gym running properly. So um, week one was just shadowing. Week two, I'm like, okay, I'm helping her to find her avatar, and I want her to write an article. I, so I had her write a 2,000-word oh. article. So you're not even starting with just training. Like, no. You're going to learn training and business and marketing yeah. at the same time. I like that. So even if even if it ends up that in three months she goes on to do something else and doesn't get hired on here as a coach, that's totally cool. Throughout this three months, I'm going to help her start to grow her own tribe a lot in the way. So same way that Angelo did for me. So that way um, she's got her own tribe. And if it does turn out that she wants to coach here and that's a direction that we move in, if that makes sense for everyone, then now she's generating her own leads and her own clients and she could be doing her own sales consultations and really become an entrepreneur within the business. Yeah. And that I want to start working towards a model more like that. Yeah. I think we're going to see a lot more of that type of mentality, especially with younger coaches and just the way the our, our economic system is moving currently. So having people, especially if you're a new business under five years, having employees or people who are working in your gym that are entrepreneurial in nature is going to be super helpful that your team is so small. Everybody does have to wear many hats. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And having, you know, having an hourly coach position, part-time hourly coach position, just isn't really good for the coach or for the business or, or anyone, you know, it doesn't, yeah. doesn't really work so well anymore. Well, they're, they are the product in essence, right? And mm -hmm. they are the leaders of the culture and, and they are the ones who are facilitating what people are here for. And if you have someone who's just getting, you know, hourly, they, they just check in, coach an hour or two and they're out, you're not going to have the same buy-in. They're not going to be there staying, you know, coming in early and helping people and hanging out after class and yeah. participating in all the social events because they're just there to, hey, I enjoy coaching. I'll be kind of here and there. But it's it's an opportunity to help someone create a career. And if it's with you, awesome. You're going to actually groom them to be able to, you know, energize lots of different capacities within the business and can really contribute to the whole business moving forward rather than just, hey, you show up, coach some classes, and you're out of here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think, right. I think we've done a big disservice to our our coaches as gym owners, you know, we've let them go. We've let them slide. Mm -hmm. You know, we, uh, I, I know for me, I, I grew up being fairly rebellious in nature. So mm -hmm. the idea of, of authority was not, I've, I've never been a fan of it. And then as I've gotten older, I was like, Oh, the fact that I'm not, you know, I don't like the authority over me. I have a hard time being the authority over somebody else. And it's mm -hmm. like, Oh, and I think a lot of gym owners are the same way, you know, tattooed up and, and don't like, you know, he might be libertarian or something mm -hmm. like that. And that type of person, like, doesn't want to drop the hammer. But I think that we've let a lot of af uh, coaches slide, mm -hmm. you know, on responsibility. It's like, oh, I'll just pay you 20 bucks an hour. You come coach class. They get super comfortable. They're just like, oh, I'm here. It's like teaching an aerobics class. You know, might as well be an aerobics instructor. It's like, I'm just going to show up, check in, check out. Don't clean the gym. Don't participate in marketing. Don't participate in sales. Don't participate mm -hmm. in any other aspect of the business. They don't understand it. They're not bought in. They have no ownership mm -hmm. uh, over any type of role outside of just like that one hour. Mm -hmm. And then when shit isn't happening, we're all surprised. We go, oh, man, like things in the gym, you know, aren't getting done. I feel like I'm doing everything. And it's a lack of our ability to delegate and to it's a lack of our ability to hold people accountable and these are things that we can make 
big differences in, but we have to then accept the, the leadership position that we've assumed by being the owner of the facility. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's just a ton of untapped energy in in our coaches if they're just coming in for one class and getting paid for one hour class. Like, yeah. They could be doing so much more and just uh, going back to content, if everyone's writing their own content because they know that that is what builds their own business in the long run, now you have four times the content you can all share. And now there's four times the content going on your own blog. Um, so everyone's everyone's sharing all those things now. Yeah, yeah. excellent. You know what, to piggyback off this too, it just kind of came into my, my head is that I think early on I struggled with this, and this is really important, is I wanted to be the best coach at my gym. And I think a lot of box owners, when they first start oh, out, yeah. um, I'm the best coach. And so if you work for me, that means you can't be the best coach. And instead of thinking, wait a second, I'm their mentor. I'm going to make them better coaches than I could ever be. Um, not that we keep them down intentionally, but it's almost like a subconscious thing where, like, like Jason's putting this in place. And she very well may outshine Jason or any of, any of us someday because he put her in the position to do that. And if she stays here, could you just imagine what this what would happen for him here? Mm -hmm. And so, like, doing more things with that thought in mind is that I'm the best coach of coaching coaches instead of I'm the best coach, period, is probably going right. to be a lot better for a lot of box owners. Yeah, yeah there, I think no uh, especially in this domain, it, it attracts a lot of competitive mm -hmm. uh, tendencies. Sure. And so – you know, it, it's that's a competitive thing. You know, it's a even if it's in your subconscious, running is like, oh, can't be better than me, can't, and anything. Like, I don't want anyone to be better than me at anything. Mm -hmm. So, having to move from that nature of competition into a, the nature of collaboration is uh, very good for business. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Trust yeah. me, I've done it both ways. <laughs> <laughs> Collaboration is way more fun. Perfect. Yeah. Well, cool, man. Well. Thank you so much for coming on the show. It was uh, an, an honor being here and, and getting to hang out. And we got to be a part of your uh, your morning group here and see everybody having a good time. So, And, and your story is just um, something we felt had to be shared. So, yeah. Thanks so much. Yeah I'm, yeah, I'm super grateful to you guys. Really yeah. appreciate it. Yeah, thank you. Awesome. Killer box, by the way. Thank like, you. Let's, do a, let's make sure we get a tour yeah. of this place. Uh, and uh, we got this nice uh, CrossFit floor over here. And then there's an awesome powerlifting area in the back that has a ton of equipment that uh, I want to go use. There's a lot of <laughs> stuff that I haven't used before or not in a long time. So really great box. Cool. So thanks, thanks for joining Mike. us. There it is. Thank oh, yeah. you. Thanks, guys.